Wow, my hair actually looks pretty nice. Damn it, it's rolling. Oh well. Sorry you guys caught that, but... Hi. I'm back again with another exciting vlog. Or at least I think it's exciting. And today we're going to be... T well, I'm going to be talking about my favorite releases of summer 2018. Which really is just going to be comprised of like all my favorite albums that released in June and July. So, if you don't see an album that you like... On this list feel free to let me know in the comments and maybe I might take a peek at them maybe I might just forget I don't know anyway so there's just not really many albums that came out this summer that I really enjoyed but I figured I'd take the time to acknowledge them and let you know which albums were my least favorite and which were my most favorite I think I have a pretty solid clue of that. Let's get started. First up, we have Artificial Selection by Dance Gavin Dance. I'm going to be really honest with you. The first couple tracks that came that came out in preparation for this record were actually really exciting. They held a lot of potential. Like, when I heard Midnight Crusade, Son of Robot, what else did they put out? Count Bassey and Care. Like, those tracks were, like, fucking out of this world. And I was so blown away by them. I'm like, dude, this record is probably going to be so much better than... What was the... Mothership. It was it's going to be so much better than Mothership. And then, the album comes out. I listen to it. And, honestly, it just seemed forgettable. As the entire album came out, and I listened to it, it was, it was pretty forgettable. There was... Other than the singles that had released prior to the release of Artificial artificial Selection. It just, there wasn't really nothing memorable about it. Like, yeah, there were some decent tracks on there. And I'm pretty sure they had some features, which I did not look into because I did not care to look after hearing it. But, honestly, there was just nothing memorable or spectacular about Artificial Selection after the first couple of listen-throughs. It just, it just wasn't in my taste. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a nice effort from from Swan, Pearson, and the other guys, but as far as recognition goes, if they get it, they fucking get it. Otherwise, I personally just wasn't blown away by it, by it after the first couple of listens. I mean, if you like it, that's cool. I do like the singles that came out in preparation for the album, but that's about it. So overall, I think I'd have to give this album a 5 out of 10. Just because all the good songs came out before the album released. And then listening to it when it came out, it was a bit of a letdown. But, hey, anytime New Dance Gavin Dance Camp comes out, I'll fucking take it. Just as long as it's, it's with Tillian. <laughs> Next up, we have Pray for the Wicked by Panic at the Disco. Now... The very first time I heard Saturday Night, I was eating lunch at school before work, and when I heard it, I thought to myself, this is probably going to be a really exciting album. And then, right after that, I also looked and saw that Panic actually put out two songs in preparation for this album. So, I listened to Saturday Night, and I thought, wow, this was great. It's not Death of a Bachelor great, but it's great. <laughs> and then, I heard fuck a silver lining and I'm just like can somebody please shoot me <laughs> I don't know what it is about silver lining but I fucking hated that song it was so annoying I felt like he just I felt like he just tried to copy Beyonce and let's be honest dude don't ever fucking copy Beyonce don't I mean, I may not be a fan, but I know when not to fucking copy an artist, because that shit's probably going to backfire. And it should have, but he's lucky it hasn't. <laughs> but, and then, a couple weeks, maybe a couple months down the road, High Hopes came out, and guess what? I fucking hated it. <laughs> I feel so terrible admitting this, because Panic at the Disco is actually one of my all-time favorites. Like, everything from A Fever to Death of a Bachelor is fucking golden. And then I listen to these songs that he, that Panic's putting out for Pray for the Wicked, and I'm just like, what the fuck is this? 
I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't. I just couldn't. And then, and then they release. Uh, why am I even saying the? It's just fucking Brendan. Then Brendan puts out um, King of the Clouds, and well, wow. I was actually not disappointed for once. <laughs> I was actually not disappointed because King of the Clouds was actually a decent track. I can't believe I was able to sit through an entire new Panic at the Disco song that wasn't a complete disappointment. And then the rest of the album comes out. Hey Look Ma I Made It was an okay track. Cause like, you know, you have the beginning of the album which is silver lining and you're just and you're just like Huh. And then you listen to it all the way through. You do have some decent tracks like Saturday Night, King of the Clouds, Dancing's Not a Crime, One of Those Drunks. You have decent tracks like that. But the thing that caught my ear the most about this album was the closing track, Dying in L.A. And I must say, as far as fame and celebrities living in Los Angeles goes, I think it's a very relatable song for them. Like, I feel like Brendan wrote that on behalf of celebrities trying to make a living in Los Angeles. And that's the one thing that caught my ear about that song the most. Was that not only is it a brilliant track, not only is it an amazing piano ballad, but it's probably, it's probably relatable for celebrities. And the fact that it was, it was such a solid closing... And I'm thinking, maybe this album is not entirely bad, but it's still not my favorite. I'm sorry, but everything before Pray for the Wicked is just gold. This record, not so much. But there is some enjoyable tracks on it. And hey, if you like it, that's cool. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying as somebody who has the biggest fucking crush on Brendan Urie, I do feel like he kind of half-assed a couple of these songs. And that's okay. Not every band puts out a perfect record. But... As far as Pray For The Wicked goes, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. It's got some enjoyable tracks, but they're not worth sitting through. At least in my viewpoint, which is okay. Because everybody has different opinions. Everybody's going to enjoy something. Not every band's going to put out a perfect record. And like I said, that's fine. Next up, we have Living Proof by State Champs. Oh my gosh. The first time I heard State Champs, you're not going to believe this, was when Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 came out. <laughs> I know, like, you hear that and you're just like, there was a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5? What the fuck? There was one, and it did not com it did not live up to the hype of the previous games, and that's okay. But, yeah, that was a f that was, that game was how I first heard of State Champs. And also, Icon for Hire, but honestly, I don't think anybody cares about them anymore. I heard Secrets by State Champs on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, and I thought, wow, this is, this is a pretty solid track. And then I go check them out, and I'm like, yo, State Champs is great. <laughs> like, honestly, I heard the entirety of Around the World and Back, and I thought, wow, this is great. And then I heard their previous album, what the hell's their previous album called? Don't remember. Why, why am I looking for this in the middle of a video? <laughs> the Finer Things. Wow, why did I forget that? Anywho, yeah. Living Proof comes out, and Dead and Gone was an okay track. And then Maya's Goal comes out, and I thought, wow, this is a banger. What else came out? I don't know. But then, once the album releases, I listened to it entirely, and I thought, This is a fucking banger. <laughs> and I hadn't really been listening to pop punk that much at that time, so hearing hearing State Champs come out with stuff, I'm like, I'm probably biased towards it, but I'm probably gonna listen to it anyways, because I met them before and they're pretty chill. Yeah. yeah, they were pretty chill. Except for the fact that Gator had abandoned him at that time. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many good tracks on on Living Proof. Safe Haven is honestly one of my favorites, along with Frozen, Mine is Gold, Our Time to Go. It's, it's just so memorable, and honestly, I'm not, I'm not sure how you can top this, but I'd probably have to give this album an 8 out of 10. 
just because it's that fucking good. <laughs> yeah, eight out of ten sounds perfect. Next up, we have Eternal Nightmare by Chelsea Grin. This was probably the first time that I was actually excited to not hear Alex Kohler's voice. <laughs> like, I'll be honest with you, I liked Self Inflicted. Self Inflicted was the reason I got into Chelsea Grin in the first place. And then I heard other records like um, Ashes to Ashes, My Damnation. Desolation of Eden isn't entirely my favorite, but there is some pretty solid tracks on there. But Self Inflicted was when I started listening to them. And I know it's not as intense as their previous works, which it's not, but I still liked it regardless. I, he I heard the first track from Eternal Nightmare, which was Dead Rose. Now, when I first heard this, I thought to myself, wait a minute, that's not Alex. And of course, me, me being the type of person that rushes to hear new music before reading statements, I'm, I'm watching this video, I'm watching their music video, and the whole time I'm thinking, wait, that's not Alex, who the fuck is that, and why are there only four people? And couldn't, then I read the statement, it all made sense, Alex had left to um, better his health, I forgot who else left, but I'm pretty sure he was, I don't remember, okay, but all I know is that Chelsea Grin's a four-piece now, there are no original members, which is okay, that doesn't mean they can't be good. But I heard Dead Rose, and I thought, wow, this is fucking great. <laughs> I love this. This album's gonna be a fucking banger. And also, Tom Barber. Lunar Shore. That's, that's where he originally came from. I've heard Lunar Shore before. They got some pretty sh sick shit. <laughs> they do. I haven't heard their new shit since Tom, since Tom left, but I'm sure it's probably just as good. At Alex's current condition, it's like, here's Kohler, and then here's Tom Barber. If Alex ever does come back to Chelsea Grin, which I kind of hope doesn't happen, he's not going to live up to Tom Barber's hype. Like, normally, I'm not on board when a, when when an original vocalist gets replaced. Like, because I'll be honest with you, even though I don't listen to Alex asking Alexandria, when I, when I first heard um, the Black... I hated it. I hated Dennis Stops' voice. I hated his presence, especially after all that shit I heard about him. Like, I was not on board about that. What are there? But there were some vocalist replacements that I did enjoy. Like, when, like when Eddie Hermita first replaced Mitch Lucker, I thought this was good. At least for when You Can't Stop Me came out. They're self-titled? Absolutely not. And then... Of course, Tom Barber replaces Alex Kohler, and I listen to this, and I'm thinking, this is a fucking monstrosity of a banger. And I said the same thing about their songs, Hostage, and See You Soon. And then the, al the rest of the album comes out, and I was going mad in the gym. <laughs> like, I was hitting the weight so fucking hard, you could not understand. Eternal Nightmare was a fucking banger. I'm, I'm honestly hoping that Tom Barber stays for the long run because Alex Kohler, like I said, he's not going to fucking live up to that hype. And also, Alex Kohler went solo as like a fucking deathcore rapper. Like his new project's called Grudges and I heard it and I'm like, can you not? <laughs> can you fucking not? <laughs> this deserves a 9 out of 10 just because it's that fucking good. It's like the perfect deathcore record, and I'm not the biggest deathcore fan, so fuck it. 9 out of 10 it is. And then finally, if you weren't expecting this, you don't know me well enough, but Post Dramatic, Mike Shinoda. Now, originally Post Dramatic was an EP, a three song EP that came out in January. It was kind of a surprise release because he did talk about, Mike Shinoda did talk about putting out new music in January, but there was only three songs that he put out for the post-traumatic EP. And it really just detailed like his thought process, what he was going through after the passing of Chester Bennington. And I listened to it. I felt like I was hit by an 
an emotional train because the way Mike felt, the way Mike expressed his feelings in the post-dramatic EP was the same way I felt. He turns it into a 16 track album and like I'm playing this on repeat for the next week. That's how much I loved post-dramatic. And I told my friends about it and they talked about how sad it was and I'm like, you realize the fucking title of the album, right? And then he collaborated with a bunch of good artists. Like, I think the first feature that was released as a single was with Black Bear. And typically I don't listen to Black Bear, but he did have a pretty, pretty solid part in the song About You. He also collaborated with Grandson, which I'm not very familiar with, but he seems pretty cool. He also collaborated with Chino Moreno and MGK which, I mean, I love Deftones. I'm not really big on MGK, but I think lately he's been maturing very much as a rapper, and that's honestly the best thing, because Wild Boy was fucking garbage, even when it did come out. And also, he also collaborated with K-Flay, which I'm pretty sure is another new artist. She sounds amazing. Post Dramatic is definitely my number one album of the summer. And as far as like album of the year, we're not gonna talk about that until December. Because we still got a lot of music to discuss between now and December. I think that'll be it for this video. I thought of, I honestly had second thoughts about making this video because I looked at my YouTube numbers and they're just not great. But I do want to put out another video because I love making vlogs. Not necessarily filming them, but I love editing. Like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to become a much better editor even right now. So... And of course, if you haven't yet, it would mean a lot if you watched my short film, if you watched my other vlogs, I'll put them in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what your top picks of the summer were. Albums, songs, it doesn't matter, even though I prefer albums, because if we were talking singles, this video would never end. But hey, you got time. Let me know in the comments, and I appreciate you watching if you did. Goodbye.